All right, so it is 10 o'clock. Let us get started. Um, let me get this PowerPoint up first. Okay, so um, like I said on Friday, um, since we didn't get to the material I had for Friday, um, that's what we're gonna do. So no reading guide, no quiz was due for today. Uh, on Friday, we left off doing our titration problem where I did part A, and I said for you to do part B over the weekend. Um, I will be posting the answer to that online. I will put up the answer key for that um, after class today. So you can go to the test two folder with answers, check to see if you got the right answer for that. And um, if you didn't, you know, still stuck on that, please let me know and I can help you work through that. Um, for um, the PowerPoint we were doing on Friday, there's actually one more question that goes with that. Question five about, you know, during a reaction, you're making a gas. We're gonna skip that. So question five from Wednesday's lecture will not be on test two because we did not go over it in class. So make a note of that. Um, it's the lecture that should be dated Wednesday, September 30th. Question five about gas uh, evolving reactions. We're gonna skip that uh, for test two. As a reminder, test two is next week, Wednesday. Um, the last material for that should be whatever we cover on Wednesday. And if we don't finish the PowerPoint, that's on Wednesday, um, it will be like, it's up to that PowerPoint. Um, and you can figure out all the information that's on the test. If you go to Blackboard, go to our test two folder, all that information, it will be covered on test two. All right, so let's get into today's lecture then. And we're talking about oxidation reduction reaction. So this little part is probably cut off. So let me, that says gain down there. So a redox reaction, that's what we call oxidation reduction, is a reaction where electrons are transferred from one reactant to another, right? So we have a reaction that happens in chemistry. And if we're moving electrons around, we call that a reduction reaction. And to remember what a reduction reaction is, we have the acronym OIL rig, where oxidation is loss, and I'll just say of electrons. Reduction is gain of electrons. So remember that acronym, oil rig. Oxidation is loss of electrons. Reduction is gain of electrons. Um, so to monitor uh, a reduction reaction in chemistry, we have to think about you know, um, oxidation states. That's what we keep in chemistry to, or that's what we have in chemistry to watch where we, uh, electrons go in a reaction. So the first thing we're gonna do is just figure out how to determine oxidation states and elements. So an oxidation state is just a made up number by chemists so we can determine where electrons go in a reaction. And we have this list of rules. We have five rules in total. And these rules are higher, hierarchical. Yeah, can't talk. Basically, these rules are low numbers are more important than higher number rules. So rule number one is the most important. Uh, rule number five is the least important. So what I want you to do is I want, to, I want you to take a couple minutes, right? See if you can understand these rules and see 
for these elements if you can assign oxidation states to them. So I'm just gonna go through A to show you, you know, what I mean. And then I want you to take a stab at B, C, D, E, and F. I understand you might not get them correct, but I still want you to try because when you're trying, that's when you get questions of, you know, what am I doing? How am I gonna do this? So um, let me do A here. So we have silver, AG. There's no charges on silver. There's no plus or minus on silver. It's just silver. So we go to rule one. The oxidation state of an atom in a free element is zero. Our example there are copper and dichloride. So if it's just silver and there's no charge next to it, the oxidation state is zero. So that's our oxidation number for uh, silver by itself with no charge. So try to work through um, these rules. Try to assign oxidation states to B, C, D, E, and F. If you have questions about like that or you want to check your answers, you can send me a private message. Um, otherwise, that's where we're going to begin again uh, today. So let's, let's see if we can figure this one out. So again, if you have any questions, want to check your answer, please let me know. Just seeing if we can work through, through these rules. So B, I'll, I'll do B now. We have AG with a plus symbol. That plus symbol is saying we're positively charged, right? And if we go to rule two, we see monoatomic that means just one type of atom. So monoatomic ions have an oxidation state equal to their charge. Ag is a monoatomic ion. The charge is plus one. So the oxidation state is plus one. So see if we can do C, D, E, and F. And for C, I'll, I'll just say for C and D, 
you're going to want to use rule um, 3A. The sum of the oxidation state of all atoms in a neutral molecule is zero. So if we do not have a charge symbol up here, that means this molecule is neutral. If it's neutral, everything has to add up to zero. All right, so let's, let's look at C here. So it's a molecule and it's neutral. So everything in that molecule, when you add up the oxidation numbers have to equal to zero. Now, our first element is calcium, Ca, right? And calcium is a group two metal, right? It's in the second column. And if we look at group two metals, actually one sec, sorry. Let me just pull up my periodic table here because I don't have it in front of me. Yep, okay. So calcium is a group two metal and rule 4B says any group two metal has an oxidation state of plus two in every compound. So calcium has an oxidation state of plus two. And our other element is fluorine, right? And so we have to go to rule five. In their compounds, nonmetals have oxidation states according to the table. And it's, I say below, it should be, sorry, table to the right, so this table. Here we have fluorine in that table and it says if fluorine is in an element, it has an oxidation state of minus one. So fluorine is minus one. Now this will always trick up students um, when I've asked this before. So there's two fluorines. However, the oxidation state of fluorine is not minus two, rather, there's two fluorines and each one has an oxidation state of minus one. So if we do the math, where we're adding up the oxidation states, calcium was plus two, fluorine is minus one, fluorine is minus one. That means the overall oxidation state for this molecule is zero when you add up everything together but calcium is plus two, fluorine is minus one. Questions so far about these oxidation states? Did I lose anybody on that explanation of calcium difluoride, or I guess calcium fluoride? All right, so if we go to D, D is gonna use rule five as well, because, um, well, it's gonna use rule 3A and rule five. So 3A, it's neutral. So everything has to equal to zero, right? There is, um, it's not an ion. There's no group one metals. There's no group two metals. Um, so let me just say this, even though hydrogen is in the first column, it's not a metal, right? It's like the oddball of the periodic table. 
So it's not a metal. Um, so it's not a group one metal. But it does have the same oxidation state as group one metals. So if CA was by itself, would it be zero? So if it was CA like that, yes, that would be zero. If it was CA two plus, it would be two plus. So you have to um, look at, at if it's a charge, but if it's by itself with no charge, it's zero. Um, if it's CA two plus, it's two plus. If it's CaF2, then yeah, Ca is two plus. Basically, any group two metal in a compound um, will always be plus two. Uh, that is, that is uh, rule four B, right? Any group one metal will be plus one. So another question: Will we be given these rules on the exam? You will not be given these rules on the exam. Um, we have to learn how to look at these compounds and figure out the oxidation states without having a bunch of rules um, in front of us. So we're using these rules as a crutch right now to understand oxidation states. Um, but as we'll see on the next slide, um, we're not gonna have this crutch um, for very long. And so we have to understand, you know, how we use these rules and like, um, and how to uh, use oxidation states without the rules in front of us. All right, D. So D um, will go by rule five. Hydrogen is plus one from our table. Sulfur is minus two. So hydrogen is plus one, sulfur is minus two. When you add all these up together, that equals zero again. All right, E. Now, here's our first um, ion that's made of multiple atoms. So our overall charge is minus two. So that means all of our oxidation states have to equal to minus two, right? And we don't have any metals. So group three B or rule um, um, 4A and 4B don't apply to us. That only applies with metals. So we have to use rule five. Now, when doing oxidation states, one of the things you'll learn is that like oxygen is always minus two. So oxygen is minus two, all right? So those of you who haven't done E or have done E, what I want you to figure out for me, and if you have an answer, send it, to a, send it by a private message because um, I want other people to answer as well and without being influenced by other people's answers. If oxygen is minus two, and if I have three copies of oxygen, and in CO3, my overall charge is minus two, I want you to tell me, what is the oxidation state of carbon? So I'll repeat that. Oxygen is minus two. We have three copies of oxygen. When added to carbon, the overall oxidation state of everything is minus two. Therefore, what is carbon? So I'm getting, so anyone who's answering me, I am, I am replying to you. Just give me a second. Da, 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 da. All right. I'm getting a lot of replies. So um, instead of taking like three minutes to type, I'm just going to give the answer. So carbon is a plus four, right? Um, 
because if we do the math, I'm gonna do it in the middle of the page here. We have three oxygens. Each oxygen is minus two. So overall, we have a minus six oxidation state from, from the oxygens. We're saying when we add our carbon, our oxidation states have to be in total minus two. So really the math is minus six plus carbon equals minus two. Well, carbon has to equal a positive four for that to be true. So with that in mind, now that I showed you E, um, I'll give everybody just a little bit of time for F, and then we'll, we'll move on to the next idea here. So again, for F, it's an ion, so everything has to equal minus two. Oxygen. Oxygen is minus two. So if we have four oxygens, right? That's like overall in total minus eight, which means chromium is plus six, right? So plus six minus eight from all of the oxygens, keeping in mind oxygen's only minus two, all right? So on a test, if I gave you CrO4 and you said oxygen's minus eight, you would be wrong. Oxygen's always minus two for the most part. So but in total, when you have four oxygens and we're doing the math of this, that's where that minus eight's coming from. So minus eight plus six is equal to minus two, all right? And if you remember back in the beginning of the semester when we were talking about charges of ions, we went through the rules of group ones are always plus one, group twos are always plus two. That's where this idea is really coming from, oxidation states. Our transition metals can be a lot of different charges. So we cannot just look at them and know the oxidation state. We can't look at chromium and just say, oh yeah, it's always plus six because it changes based on what compound it's in. But we can look at calcium and say, that's always plus two. We can look at magnesium, that's always plus two. We can look at sodium and say, that's always plus one. So that's an easy way to like remember these rules, right? If you know the charge of the ion, which we did learn about a couple of weeks ago, you know the oxidation state for those, those atoms, right? Uh, oxygen is not a minus three. Oxygen is always a minus two. So column six is always minus two. Column seven, which is your halogens, always minus one. And then the column that's over it are your noble gases. Those are always zero. Where does the plus six from chromium come from? Um, so it's, it's, it's doing my math, right? What we're saying is that the oxidation state of chromium plus four times the oxidation state of oxygen, so I'm gonna put an ox because that's not a zero, is equal to minus two, right? Oxygen is always minus two. So we have chromium plus four multiplied by minus two equals minus two or chromium minus eight equals minus two. Doing that math, chromium has to be a plus six. So that's where the plus six is coming from. Any other questions about just assigning oxidation states? 8A. Um, isn't 8A your noble gases? One sec. So that's like your neon. So I got, I got uh, a question was raised. Aren't, aren't molecules in column eight um, minus one? And I think column eight is also column 18, 
different periodic tables say different things. So if it, if you're looking at helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, radon, those are all zero. Uh, noble gases are always zero. Your fluorine, your chlorine, your bromium, um, seven or 17, those are minus one. So your halogens are minus one. Your noble gases are zero. Oxygen, sulfur, minus two. Um, most other elements, um, we only know the oxidation state of like the elements in this table or our metals. Everything else can be a little bit variable. Any other questions? Just assigning oxidation states. All right. So the reason why we, uh, we um, assign oxidation states is because we, like I said, we want to see during a reaction where our electrons are going. And we use our oxidation states to monitor that. So during a reaction, if we see our oxidation state become more negative, we say something was reduced. Remember, oil rig. Ah. Reduction is gain of electrons. Electrons, and this is something that trips people up, so I'll make a note of it. Electrons are negatively charged. They're negatively charged, right? So if I gain electrons, I become more negative. And that is a concept that will confuse, um, confuse you, uh, at least historically that has confused students. So if you're gaining electrons, you become more negative. So you're reduced if your number, if your oxidation number decreases. While if you're oxidized, you lose electrons. So if you're oxidized, you become more positive because you're losing something that was negatively charged, all right? So that's what oxidation and reduction are. Now there's another concept at the very top that I forgot about. Usually um, oxidation numbers are whole numbers. It is possible, it's rare, but it is possible that oxidation numbers are not whole numbers. So here in KO2, oxygen is actually minus one half. Um, I probably will not give you any molecules like that on the test. So for us, we're gonna have whole numbers but in reality, it's possible not to have a whole number. What makes O have a half charge here instead of changing K? Uh, K, um, so remember our rules go by order of importance, right? So if I just go back to the last slide here, um, K is a uh, group one metal, so that's 4A where group one metals are plus one. Oxygen being minus two is rule five. So 4A is higher than rule five. So K being plus one is more important than oxygen being minus two. So we change the oxygen instead of the potassium. That's, that's why we change oxygen, not potassium. But like I said, that's very rare and I probably will not test you on that. So we have some vocab to go with this and we have agents, right? So if you are in a redox reaction, if you're reduced, you are called the oxidizing agent. If you're oxidized, you're called the reducing agent. That is, I know, confusing. The idea is if you yourself were reduced, you cause something else to be oxidized. So you're the oxidation agent. If you were oxidized, you cause something else to be reduced. So you were the reducing agent. So whenever you see the word agent, like reducing agent, you're looking for the compound that was oxidized. If you're the oxidizing agent, you're looking for the thing that was reduced. So whenever you see agent, just know you're kind of looking for the opposite element. 
All right, so let's see how, how we use this in a reaction. So we're gonna combine our oxidation states we just learned about and put that in a reaction to determine if each reaction is a redox reaction, all right? So let me just say, what is a redox reaction? A redox reaction is when oxidation numbers change. So if you're doing a redox reaction and you assign all the oxidation numbers and nothing changes, that is not a redox reaction. So our first goal on question two is just determine if we have a redox reaction. So let's do A together. We're gonna to be using our rules from question one and we're just going to assign oxidation numbers first. So lithium is by itself. It does not have a charge symbol. So that's rule one. It is zero oxidation number. Oxygen by itself, no charge, so it has a zero oxidation number. That is another source of confusion I often see with these. Oxygen is only minus two if it's bound to something else. If you have an atom by itself, like O2, there's just oxygen, and that substance doesn't have a charge, then each atom in that substance is zero. So each oxygen is zero, all right? Now we have lithium oxide. So we do have a compound. Overall, that compound's neutral. So lithium is a group one metal. So lithium's plus one. Oxygen is usually always minus two. We can do a check here to see if our math makes sense. We have two lithiums and one oxygen. So each lithium is plus one, oxygen is minus two. Overall, the oxidation state is zero. So that, that makes sense. So yes, this is a redox reaction because our oxidation numbers have changed. Lithium is not minus one because it's a metal. So lithium is always plus one. Metals are positive numbers. You're hardly going to find a negative charge metal. Do we ignore coefficients? You ignore coefficients when you're doing like, what is the oxidation number of this atom, right? Because I have two lithiums. So overall, when I'm adding my lithiums together, that's plus two. But each individual lithium is plus one, right? So you kind of ignore coefficients when you're um, assigning individual atoms, but you have to keep, that's why I did this check on the bottom because I need to be aware of what my coefficients are uh, to know there's two lithium. If you're talking about the numbers in front, yeah, we ignore those. We don't care about four lithiums or two lithium oxides. Um, that is stoichiometry and we care about that in different parts of chemistry. We don't care about it in assigning oxidation numbers. Okay, so now, now we have our, our oxidation numbers. So we know this is a redox reaction. So now we have to figure out what's been oxidized and what's been reduced. So remember, oil rig. So oxidation is loss of electrons. So if you lose electrons, you become more positive. So lithium went from zero to plus one in our reaction, right? It was zero on the left-hand side, plus one on the right-hand side. So that means this has been oxidized. And if you're oxidized, you are the reducing agent. For oxygen, we went from zero to minus two. So I'm just looking at each side of the arrow here while I'm saying that. We became more negative. So we gained electrons if you're becoming more negative. So we were reduced. Rig, reduction is gain of electrons. If we're reduced, we're the oxidizing agent.
All right. Questions about how I did A? And if, and if you don't have questions about that, try and see if you can solve B. B is hard. Um, it, it's harder than A. What, what I'll say for B is when you have polyatomic ions, right? When you have like SO4, from our chart, we should have learned that SO4 has an overall charge of minus two. So when balancing or when assigning polyatomic anions, everything in SO4 has to equal to minus two. And I'll give you NO3 as well. Um, NO3 has an overall charge of minus one, right? So SO4 has an overall charge of minus two, NO3 has an overall charge of minus one. So what I want you to do is using our rules, assign oxidation states for B, tell me if this is a redox reaction. And if it is, tell me the oxidizing agent and reducing agent. If you have questions while doing this, please, as always, let me know. Otherwise, I will give everybody a couple minutes to work through this. So just a tip, if you have gotten stuck like on lead, like PB, um, transition metals should be the last thing you assign a charge to in your compound because the charge, the oxidation state of the transition metal depends on what it is bound to. And transition metals like lead, they change all the time. So we can't just look at lead and give it a number. Um, but I'm going to work through these right now. So let's start with lead nitrate, right? So we have NO3. Oxygen in a compound is going to be minus two. And we have three of these. So overall, oxygen has a minus six charge with all three oxygens, I should say. We have three oxygens. So overall, the oxidation state is a minus six. NO3 itself is a polyatomic ion, and the charge of that ion is minus one. Therefore, nitrogen has to be a plus five, because the idea here is plus five minus six equals minus one, right? So that's NO3, nitrogen is plus five, and oxygen is minus three. For lead, Lead is bound to two molecules of NO3. 
each molecule of NO3 has an overall charge of minus one. This whole lead nitrate compound does not have a charge though. So the idea is, uh, of this is lead plus two nitrate equals zero, okay? Well, lead, we don't know yet, but we know nitrate is minus one, metal equals zero. That means lead has to be plus two because the math I'm doing is two minus two equals zero. The minus two is coming from nitrate being minus one. And we have two copies of that. Questions on how I figured out lead nitrate. All right, let's go to sodium sulfate. SO4 has an overall charge of minus two. Each oxygen is minus two. We have four of those. So overall with the four, we have minus eight coming from all four oxygens. Sulfur has to be plus six. And uh, sodium, uh, our rule for sodium is sodium is always plus one. So one, six, minus two. Um, Moving all over to the other side, lead sulfate. Uh, sulfate really will never char change its oxidation states. So in sulfate, SO4, oxygen is always minus two, uh, sulfur is always plus six. So sulfate, the oxidation states of sulfate overall is minus two. Lead sulfate is neutral, which means lead's plus two. Same idea with nitrate, NO3, the oxidation states of NO3 never change really. So oxygen's minus two, sodium's plus five, or nitrogen's plus five rather, sodium's plus one. If you look from the left side of the equation to the right side of the equation, nothing has changed. As no oxidation states have changed, this is not a redox reaction. A redox reaction only occurs if, our, if we have oxidation states changing from one side of the arrow to the other. B, that did not happen. We figured out the oxidation numbers and we saw no change. Therefore, we can determine this is actually not a redox reaction. Questions how I did B. So if it's not an ion, its overall charge is zero. Yeah, if it's a compound and there's no charge state, everything has to add up to zero. Um, and when you are working with polyatomic ions, that, this is one of the reasons why um, I wanted people to memorize that chart, right? It's because we're, we're gonna see polyatomic ions all the time in chemistry. So it's very useful if we can pull up that information. But polyatomic ion like NO3 has an overall charge of minus one. So all the charges of that polyatomic ion have to equal minus one. And then if we pair it with another element, we can figure out what the charge of that other element is. But yeah, if it's not, if our molecule does not have a charge symbol, everything has to equal to zero. I mean, we did see an example where like CO3 minus two, that minus two is saying everything in our element has to equal to minus two or anything, everything in our compound. Any other questions? If not, I'm gonna move on to combustion reactions here. So when you blow something up, 
or light it on fire. That's called combustion. And combustion is a redox reaction. Um, really what combustion is, is that you are incorporating oxygen into a compound. And when you, when you have carbon and hydrogen, your compounds are always gonna be carbon dioxide and water. Um, that's one of the reasons why like driving a car increases the amount of greenhouse gases because um, the fuel we use is made out of carbons and hydrogens. We take oxygen from the environment and with a flame, we combine those two and the exhaust that you put out is carbon dioxide, which will trap heat plus water vapor, which can also trap heat um, if, it, if it's a lot of it's in the atmosphere as well. But yeah, any carbon hydrogen compound when lit on fire with oxygen, like carbon dioxide and water, um, that also means you cannot have a combustion reaction without oxygen. Uh, one of the ways to put out a fire is to take away its oxygen because if there's no oxygen, it's impossible to have a fire going because that fire is showing, is, is, a, is the energy being released during a combustion reaction, right? Do, does combustion usually involve organic compounds? Um, for the most part, yeah. Um, we're gonna talk about combustion like that. Our first example is actually a non-organic compound burning. Um, so it doesn't have to be organic matter, um, but usually when we talk about combustion, it is. So what we have to do here is we have to finish and balance our reactions, give oxidation states and determine what was the oxidation agent and the reducing agent. Um, so let me just tell you, I'll finish the reactions. Let's, let's do that because we didn't talk about sulfur. So figuring out the reaction for sulfur plus oxygen is, is not, not simple if you haven't done this, but basically, when you burn sulfur, and you know when you burn sulfur because that smells like rotten eggs. So if you ever smell rotten eggs, that's sulfur. So sulfur plus oxygen make sulfur dioxide. So that will make SO2 gas. And that's balanced. Now we for B, I'll finish that one off as well. We have propane plus oxygen. So when you have carbon hydrogen with oxygen, you're always, always going to make CO2 plus O2. Or sorry, not O2, H2O, my bad. So we're always going to make that. CO2 is a gas uh, and liquid water. All right. So when we do a combustion reaction, I'll most likely give you one on the test. I will give you one with carbon and hydrogen plus oxygen. I'll give you one like B. I won't give you one like A because sulfur plus oxygen is weird. Just know for B, when you see this on the test, those of you who are here live and watching the video, it pays, pays to do that stuff because I'm telling you, this will be on the test. Make sure that your products are carbon dioxide in water. All right. Balancing this is tricky. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen reactants, products. So we saw both three, six, and two. Our products are one, two, and three. Start with balancing the carbons, put a three right there. Go to three, uh, go to seven. Um, balance the hydrogens next, put a three in front of there. Six, uh, nine, now, here's a hint for when you're burning stuff, doing combustion reaction. If you have an odd number of oxygens over here and your only oxygen compound is O2, it cannot be balanced, right? To balance this, 
this is your trick. You always double your carbon compound on the left. So I'll, I'll repeat that. If you are trying to balance a combustion reaction and you find yourself that you have an odd number of oxygens on the right and an even number of oxygens on the left, the way to balance that is to double the amount of carbon on the left. So I double the amount of carbon, that goes to six, that goes to 12. So I need to change my CO2 over here to be six. Uh, that goes to six, 12, 15. I need to double the amount of water now. So that goes to six, that goes to 12, that goes to 18. And that's 19 oxygens, right? So that's balancing our equation. Our, our balance equation is two, 19, six, and six, right? Um, I know I'm out of time. Let me just do A super quick though. Uh, A is uh, really quick to do. And at, at the beginning of class, I will just pick up with B with our balanced equation um, as a refresher. So um, as Friday, I left you with a problem not to do or a problem we didn't do in class. I highly suggest that you do B and we'll, I will do that at Wednesday morning. I'll show you B, but I want you to have an answer there for B so you can check your work. Um, oh, it's nine. It's not 19. I can't do math. Yeah, that's nine. All right. So sulfur by itself is zero. Oxygen by itself is zero. SO2, oxygen in a compound is minus two. Therefore, sulfur has to be plus four because sulfur um, our sulfur dioxide is not an ion, so that's neutral compound, right? So that's why I, I keep saying, you know, in, in a compound, oxygen is like always minus two. There are exceptions, but like oxygen is usually one of the ones that's always minus two. Okay, so oxygen went from zero to minus two. Oil rig. It, it became more negative, so it gained electrons. So oxygen went from zero to minus two. It became more negative, which means it gained electrons, which means it was reduced, also known as the oxidizing agent. I know, kind of confusing, but it, it was reduced, therefore it's the oxidizing agent. Sulfur went from zero to plus four. So it lost electrons. If you become more positive, you lose electrons. That means it was oxidized or the reducing agent. Oxidation is loss of electrons. Reduction is gain of electrons. All right. If anyone has any questions, I can I can stay um, a couple minutes here to answer those. Like I said, B, I want you, now that I balance the equation for B, I want you to figure out the oxidation states. I want you to tell me what the oxidizing agent and reducing agent are. And I will, at the very beginning of um, Wednesday uh, lecture, I'm just going to jump right into that. Um, but yeah, is, is there any questions at all? Um, here at the end of class about our redox reactions. And I will look for more practice for oxidation states and put that up. So um, I'm going to make a note of that right now, actually, so I don't forget. Ah. There's a pen. I'll put that practice up in the test two folder. But if there's no questions, um, I will put a homework up like always. Um, I'll put this video up and I will see people on Wednesday. So solution is stoichiometry practice. Yeah, I'll look for that um, one as well. Uh,
Yeah. Other than that, catch everybody on Wednesday.